Hey everyone, it's I Am Your Kryptonite, and today we're covering macro crypto news and trends. This video is based off of Bowtie Bull. They have a substack where they talk about crypto, ecom, your career, and how to build wealth essentially. Summary of this video so far is crypto on public companies balance sheets. And also, if you want to start your own online business, how you can get started, how Bowtie Bull is going to fund you. And if you really like this video, I highly recommend subscribing to their newsletter because you'll get this newsletter exactly when it comes out. So let's get started. So let's start off um, by the fact that it's published on August 22nd to give you a timestamp on this and that the level is Sonic Octus. So they have um, an interesting naming system where one through five, one being easiest, five being much more difficult to understand. So this is an article that's a little bit more difficult to understand. Okay, so what they're saying is that August returns were better than they had anticipated and that they anticipate more CHOP through September due to the timing of institutional fund deployment from VCs, from private equity, and a near 50K per Bitcoin. If you were dollar cost averaging throughout summertime sadness, you're in great shape right now. Don't fret, September will very unlikely see a 50 to 75% change like we saw in August and you still have time to stack crypto. So let's talk about macro and crypto update in one. So number one, there's exchange pressure. Continued pressure on exchanges to KYC. KYC is know your customer, it's required by the government so they can track people's transactions so they can tax you and find you if you do anything illegal <laughs> and follow the money. Once again, take your money off the exchange. This means you actually own your crypto assets. Every coin you have on exchange is not yours by definition. It's the exchanges and on their software system that says it belongs to you. Luckily, you know that, so we can move on to the next step and look at what typically happens when you have a large drawdown in Bitcoin. They always say not your keys, not your coins. So if we zoom in onto this, Bitcoin, all exchanges reserve the amount of Bitcoin held in exchanges wallets. There are two places they've highlighted. Um, let's see. Okay. Black is price. Blue is the reserve. So the blue is the reserve. It's going down, 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 down. It goes up a little bit and it goes down again. The price is steadily increasing. Stagnates here, increase again, stagnates here just as the reserve on exchanges increases and then increases price increases again as the supply goes down on exchanges so what does this mean generally speaking the spike up after a big drawdown is followed by a miniature correction based on the current number on exchange it looks pretty fairly valued based solely on exchange data what's the difference we know institutional money is coming particularly in q4 of this year Therefore, our current recommendation is to buy on down days going forward. In fact, there's a good chance September is down modestly from end of August. Funds that raise money don't want expensive coins when they launch. We already story play out once. As a point of emphasis, we don't think you'll see anything drastic on the downside. Number two, continued adoption. With the near term covered, we can look at the recent adoption of Bitcoin as well. To say the least, it's looking good. Number one, United Wholesale Mortgage will begin accepting Bitcoin from home loan payments. And number two, Coinbase will now purchase 500 million of crypto on its balance sheet and commit 10% of profits to crypto as well. And number three, all growth in Robinhood transaction based revenue was practically driven entirely by crypto. Wow. That's insane. I think previously or earlier, Bowtie Bull disparaged, I'm not sure is the correct word, Coinbase for having less crypto on its balance sheet than MicroStrategy, which is funny because it's a crypto company. Let's talk about United Wholesale Mortgage. How big is this company? Actually, quite large. With quarterly revenue of 485 million US dollars, while market share might change, it is the second largest U.S. mortgage lender. Jeez, okay. I don't know if we want to actually zoom in on this chart, but this is 
basically the revenue chart for United Wholesale Mortgage. You can look at it if you want. While it is unclear if the firm will hold Bitcoin on its balance sheet or simply convert it to cash, the marketing impact is enormous. This is effectively the mainstream moment for crypto and Bitcoin in particular. So even if the firm converts Bitcoin to cash, the marketing impact is what matters. When you send a memo to hundreds of thousands of people saying you can pay in Bitcoin, a percentage of them will say, hmm, maybe this thing will, is here to stay. In short, long-term bullish as customers go down the rabbit hole. Basically, it doesn't really matter right now whether they hold crypto on their balance sheet or not, even if they simply convert it into cash, like they receive Bitcoin as payment, they change exchange it on an exchange. It's the fact that they've even mentioned it that causes, I don't know, like maybe a price increase or something like that. Okay, let's talk about Coinbase. This seems more reactionary than significant. Effectively, they are talking out of both sides of their mouth. The CFO is holding a lot of cash in case there is a prolonged downturn. Meanwhile, they own a minuscule amount of Bitcoin compared to, say, MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy has 23.4x more Bitcoin than Coinbase. Shareholders and investors likely said, why aren't you investing in something you believe in? Therefore, they budged. In this case, the best thing about the announcement is a 10% market buys going forward. You now have another consistent bid on quarterly basis. This is good for price support. If I understand this correctly, it means that Coinbase is going to be consistently buying crypto, which is good for the rest of the market because the price of Bitcoin, if they're, using, if they're buying more Bitcoin, is increasing. Robinhood. This one is pure not going to make a joy for anyone who understands the content here. Knowing that there are enough smart people to enjoy this paragraph is simply fantastic, so take a look. Cryptocurrencies increase 2.33 million in the second quarter of 2021 compared to 5 million in the second quarter of 2020. So we know the increase was around 228 million US dollars. They also frame it like transaction based revenues increase. 141% to 451 million in the second quarter of 2021. So what they're really saying is that 86% of all this growth was just from crypto. In other words, there are loads of people trading crypto on Robinhood with no ability to move it off of cold storage. So in actuality, when you're trading crypto on Robinhood, you're just trading the price, but you don't actually hold any crypto. So it's not yours. <laughs> Number three, quick connection. So far, so good on the crypto stock exposure front. MicroStrategy has gone from $550 to $715, up 30%, while Coinbase has gone from $235 to $257, up 9% over the past month. Even if we mark Coinbase at the low of the past month at $223, it would be around 50%, still half versus MicroStrategy. Per usual, we suggest anyone new to crypto just to get off zero and to move it onto cold storage. That said, can't see your reason to own Coinbase over something like MicroStrategy, given the performance delta and the leverage MicroStrategy has taken out. If you're looking to write a Bitcoin-based stock, MicroStrategy would be a better beta play on the price of Bitcoin. Okay, I'm actually going to add my two cents here. One thing that's interesting that Coinbase does is that a lot of people in the company, employees of Coinbase, participate internally in their, it's not even like a branch, but I, maybe like project division called Coinbase Ventures. Coinbase invests a lot in new crypto companies and projects, and it's pretty much employee run. Like it's not like they have a separate division. It's just part of their culture. And they invest with, I think their profits. So my two cents is like, it's worth buying Coinbase stock if you can't invest in projects early or if you don't know how to scout projects because it gives you exposure in all the projects that they've already done their due diligence on that they've invested in. I think. Don't quote me on that. Someone correct me if my reasoning on this is not good. Number four, Ethereum's update, which is Ethereum. Looking a bit healthier than Bitcoin, attempting to be as neutral as possible given the book portfolio we're running. 
However, you can see the consistent downtrend in the supply on exchanges. So again, the blue is the amount on exchanges. It's steadily going down. Well, the price of Ethereum is steadily going up. There was a huge peak here in May and it's going up again. So also after EIP 1559, which was a success, a success, you're seeing an uptick in the number of people using ETH 2.0. From a psychological perspective, since the upgrade was successful, investors most likely believe 2.0 will also be a success. This is another chart, which is the ETH staking rate. So the staking rate is in blue and the price is in black. The staking rate is steadily increasing and there looks to be a correlation with price. So summary, near term, don't see September being better than August given the run up. October is when we expect more interest given the timing of fund flows. If things change, we'll update as usual. Number two, mortgage payments with Bitcoin is a big long-term positive. Robinhood is noise. And the main takeaway from Coinbase is the 10% profits commitment. Number three, micro strategy outperforming Coinbase, which is what we'd expect given the leverage. And number four, Ethereum upgrade looks quite healthy. So now we'll come to the interesting part of Votai Bull's strategy of building out their own niche creator network and also about funding your e-commerce business. Okay, so before walking through how this works, disclaimer upfront, equal opportunity, unequal results. We're going to do our best to find every single person with a niche skill set that can be monetized online. We can tell if you're serious and good and we'll fund it for you. These funding mechanisms will begin around October. For now, we're going to build link juice for everyone. And I don't know what link juice is. And yes, we will try to democratize the screen space over time, as well as creating a sliding or rotating page so it becomes more fair over time. So here's the current structure of how they've done everything. We realize the current setup is niche with six groups. Number one, Bitcoin, oh, B2B crypto econ. Number two, fitness with Ox. Number three, Wall Street with Jesus, Size Lord. Number four, with Bowtie Patriot. Number five, Video with Tamarin Turkey. And number six, Cooking with Octopod. This might be a little confusing since it's one of my first videos about Bowtie Bull, I'll cover it. But basically Bowtie Bull started this cartoon jungle and is trying to make a thing where you can have a cartoon avatar and you just contribute in this system and everyone is anonymous and you have your own niche that you are known for. So over time, we will search and find more people. We message a few privately and the website will no longer be static. Eventually it'll be a rotating site so everyone gets a chance to be one of the first click options. For now, we've run it through Bowtie Bowl since we'll be taking our own website. <laughs> Purchased with Cole's cast by North Koreans <laughs> and it will now re redirect to Bowtie Islands. Okay, yeah. Sometimes they say stuff that's like, it's just so off. Like, it, it's so funny because it comes out of nowhere. Conceptually, this will make sense as Link Juice slowly moves from our old website to the island. People will slowly visit the island website, and once we have the SEO down and all the right redirects, we will begin funding. So, funding becomes sovereign. The VC model is dead. We're just early. There's no way we would bet against the sovereign individual. So instead, we're going to push the world in that direction and bet that the ecosystem will generate more reach and become more self-sustaining over time. For the niche markets we do not know well, we will fund them. Once you reach $1,000 a month in income, you're on your own to build your own niche business. This is a reasonable goal to reach quickly. And from there, it's really up to you. For example, we have no idea how to scale up a video company as we've never worked in that industry. Okay, my take on this is one thing. So when they say the VC model is dead, I think about this a lot and how it relates to media. And a, an easy analogy to this is like with VCs, they take equity and they give you money. Uh, and no matter what, you're kind of stuck with them on your cap table unless you buy them out eventually. It's something pretty similar with media, say like hype houses or brand management. They take a cut of your earnings, no matter how big you grow, no matter how successful or helpful they were at one point, they're always going to be tied to you. And what Bowtie Bull is doing is that instead of giving you money in exchange for something, they're just going to give you, they're going to support you. And because you're successful, you will make their brand Bowtie Bull successful. 
and it's just and they can afford to support you from the beginning because they don't need your money they just want more community and they are already financially independent it's very similar to like the snl model and that way this relationship is never dependent or restrictive it's just all good vibes so this is how they explain how it works with examples for wall street this should be easy plug and play as bull type bull already has a large wall street audience from the past decade in this case it's up to jesus size lord to figure out how to create the right content and create a self-sustaining entity we have already exchanged messages with them privately so they are working behind the scenes one note we will periodically check to see if the website is running a scam if it is it will be removed for example, if we see modeling classes being sold, we know it is a scam because those are not needed on Wall Street. Everyone goes to training the street for free paid by Cloud Bank. I think what they say is that if you actually are in finance, your company will teach you how to do everything. So you don't need to pay for that courses. So that's an easy tell to know if someone is a scammer. Fitness. This one is easy. Bowtied Ox just needed some views to get started social media presence. He should be self-sustaining by the end of the year and making more than $1,000 a month. At this point, he is on his own. However, we are willing to give him some pointers on the way. For example, one item he needs to do on its own is go on fitness forums and create a ton of value. This will then drive another traffic source for him. And by doing this, he diversifies his engagement. Okay, let's talk about art and video. No surprise here, we have no clue. For those familiar with Bowtie Bull, we don't talk about business, we don't understand at all. That's the case here. We do not know how video and art industries grow and expand. This is very true. They do not talk about things that they do not know about and they say it up front so you know. And as a longtime reader, I definitely trust them on this. We can learn the basics for sure. However, we don't have time to go beyond that. We have to talk to them separately and understand how the industry works and how we can help them scale. So the good news is we have various stuff for Troll Tuesday and other events we're planning for the jungle. We recently worked with Tamarin on something and hopefully it works. If it does, you'll hear from us about it. Please don't ask him. It has to be kept quiet to give it a chance. Okay, third niche, cooking. Leaving the most controversial one for last, gotta love the ones on the fence. What do we mean by this? There's a clear overlap between Bowtie Bull's audience and cooking, but not a ton. The reason why there should be one for cooking is like if you're living healthy, and you're into making money, you're probably going to try to take care of your body. So they're working with Octopod in the background to help him get set up and running. Anyone who's followed us for a decade know we had info on fitness and Wall Street, but cooking, not so much. Also definitely true. They like occasionally drop stuff about like supplements you need or the foods you should eat, but not much about recipes and stuff besides rice and beans as low-key a joke too. That said, anyone smart is going to learn how to cook healthy food from a high quality chef on the cheap. Since anyone reading this is smart enough to focus on stacking versus flexing on the great generational wealth transition. So strategy, here's what we're thinking. Octopod probably needs more of a capital infusion than an audience infusion. So we're gonna structure something like this. We'll send him free money. He uses his money to gift away his product to say 50 to 100 general members and uses the rest of the funds to gift away products, paid, sub stacks, books, gumroll, who knows, to people outside of the jungle, ideally foodies or however this industry works. After this, the built-in audience base will likely be in the low 100 to 200 range. At this point, you're looking at profits of around 500 to $700 a month. At this point, Octopod will have to figure out how to grow his audience outside of just the jungle. We're a bit in the dark in this as we don't know how this works. However, if he can create a self-sustaining revenue base of around $1,500 a month, we can help him create an actual e-commerce business around cookware. At this point, if he can hit $1,500 a month mark organically, we're confident we can help him scale out with e-commerce connections and the sky is the limit from there. I guess these are the niches that they definitely want to be supporting, video, art, and graphic design, which I think is super important, and cooking. So, Please do not be upset if you're not up here. We're just getting the shell up to go ahead and find people. For example, we know Bowtie Kudu is doing some good header work. Interesting, Bowtie Sales Guy is dropping gems on Twitter. And we have some music as well as Bowtie Value. Another guitar person we think we miss. There's also a tax guy and a Linux software guy. A guitar guy. Okay. Either way, this is day one, so it'll evolve much like all the websites. So before getting very excited, please note you need to be smart about this. Number one, put your biz under a different name 
your friends or family are fine. You can set it up in Wyoming. Number two, once this is done, you can work on your project while you also focus on your career, whether that be on Wall Street, technology, or sales. Those are the three careers that they recommend over and over and over again, no other careers. There is no excuse to have a single income stream, especially if you have the ability to do two things at once. Hint, this means only work for companies that allow remote setups. We will do the lifting funding to start. By the beginning of 2022, we will have a cleaner strategy based on the results of each cartoon anon. Again, equal opportunity, unequal results. Over the long term, you get what you deserve out of life, which is a blessing if you put in maximum effort. Six of Coins Tarot generally represents sharing, I've never seen them put something like this before, of wealth and fairness with long-term goals and abundance despite the look of charity. Notice the balance in the left hand. This is another way of saying the person who ran with the Terran idea is growing rapidly. Why? She's putting in the work and she's getting what she deserves. Coincidence, the wealth cards and tarots are coins, you decide. So, readings are also heavily tied to oracles and crystals as well. We don't think it's a coincidence that they are becoming quite popular. Um, another one of Bowtide Bull's predictions in November or December of 2020 they had predicted the trends that they will imagine taking off in 2021. One of them was um, this trend of people trying to find themselves in the midst of all this COVID chaos, um, the midst of institutions crumbling and failing them, in the midst of their parents not knowing the answers to things, and um, a way to be a band-aid solution to that for these people who are looking for direction is to offer readings get into astrology, get into tarot reading, give them some sort of answer and reassurance because this is a trend and I definitely see it happening myself. So again, none of this is legal or financial advice of any kind, but rather opinions, both from myself and from this blog Q and A. Um, you can watch my other YouTube video here covering their August update and Q and A. Overall, I'll say this article by Bowtie Bull is probably on the lightweight side. This is one of the ones you read as a supplement to their heavier heading articles. They're much more packed with knowledge. And one of the other videos to watch after this, probably the one on the tech bubble 2001 and the crypto market related to that. So I hope everyone really enjoyed this video. Subscribe to keep updated. Turn your notifications on so that you see these as soon as they come out and you can just play it while you're driving or something and subscribe to them if you want to read the news as soon as it hits your inbox and gets sent out to everyone. Okay, bye.